Thomas, welcome everyone. Uh -huh. Thomas Pridgen, you're getting a virtual round of applause. <laughs> there is a whole chat here, all just pumped about that solo. And uh, welcome everyone, Thomas. Yeah, man. How you doing, man? I'm over here trying to gain my breath, bro. Yeah, I see that. Um, <laughs> well, while you catch your breath, again, welcome everyone. If you are new here, please let me know. Um, we have a, a whole hour here with Thomas, and there is going to be a chance at the very end for questions. So if you guys are new and you've never done this before, at the very bottom right below the video, there is a little box that says submit a question. Do that if you want to ask Thomas a question. We'll get to them at the end. It won't change your page or reload or lose your spot in chat, so don't worry about that. And um, I'll try to get to as many questions as I can right. at the end. But I want to get a lot more play in from you. And man, like, why don't, before we get into the whole core of the lesson, just talk a little bit about yourself, who you played for, a little bit about uh, when you started drumming and all that kind of stuff. Well, um, I guess, well, I started playing, I don't know what camera to look in. I've been playing since I was three years old. Um, yeah. I just turned 30, so I am not a prodigy anymore. <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I started playing in church. Um, my grandmother was a piano player, she's really nice, and... Um, she actually worked a day job, so she lived through me a lot. You know yeah. what I mean? She, you know, was like, dude, you want to play drums? You know, and she just basically nurtured my talent and helped me get to where I'm at. And yeah. um, she actually passed away two years ago. And um, since she's passed, you know, when she was here, I had her as a huge motivation. And even now she's not here, she's a huge motivation. But I just went harder. So um, I don't know. I've been playing with, now, well, I've been playing with Thundercat. And a little bit with Captain Murphy, who's uh, who's Flying Lotus's alter ego, if I'm not probably supposed to say that. And um, I've been playing with, who else have I been playing with? I've been playing with Trash Talk. I've been playing with Snoop Dogg a little bit. I've been playing with, um, now I'm playing with Suicidal Tendencies. Yeah. I also have my own band called The Memorials that I've been playing a lot with. Mm -hmm. um, who else have I been I've been playing with a band called Electric Wire Hustle, yeah. who's from New Zealand. Um, I've been playing with, I've been playing with a lot of people, man. I just played on Lauren Hill's whole new record, um, which was weird because I got to play with um the legend Richard Bona, who's an awesome bass player. Um, I don't know. I played with a lot of people. Um Tour with Mars Volta for a couple yeah, years. Yeah, I used to play with Mars too, Volta for yeah. a long time. Um if we go back then, I played with a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> Christian no, Scott, um, Keisha Cole, um, played with a slew of gospel artists in the past and um now I'm just chilling and being a person. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm playing with suicidal tendencies, which is going to be pretty turned up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been um, rehearsing with them for a few weeks, and um, we play our next, our first show next week together. And then um, this whole year, we got a, a a slew of shows with Slayer and Exodus. So I'm pretty much looking forward to just um, just raging out and thrashing. I'm probably going to play double bass drums on this suicidal tendencies gig. Yeah. So I'm just having fun, dude. I do it all. That's awesome. I know we got to I got to hang out with you a little bit uh, the last couple of days when we brought him out here, and I totally forgot how uh, absolutely insane you are and how hard you hit on the drums. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> yeah. I tell you guys, it's hit my chest, <laughs> but it's so good. I love it. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, today uh, we're talking about rudiments around the kit yeah. and uh, how you approach rudiments. Now, obviously, you started when you were three. Do you remember the first rudiment that you learned or that, uh, how you kind of started? I mean, started? I remember when I started noticing what I was playing was a rudiment. Yeah? Like, I learned um, double strokes and paradiddles. Um, that was pretty much the first um, rudiments and singles, obviously. It um, was like the first rudiments I started on, and then um, I started figuring out what they were. Yeah. I started buying... Um, rudiment books and I would go through them and some of them I couldn't do and I remember I would always do like flam tap and it would go into flam um uh, f uh what flam a diddles I would, go, I would just I would just go through the book and do as many as I possibly could but um I was mainly doing a lot of um doubles all that stuff um and then um, when I got to I went to Berkeley School of Music and it was a teacher by the name of John Ramsey, and he took lessons from Alan Dawson. And Alan Dawson was the teacher who taught um, Tony Williams. And um, I took also lessons from Tony Williams when I was really young. And um, that consisted of playing double, double stroke roles for hours. <laughs> and um, I just never knew really why. I would go to the lessons, I'd be like, why is this dude making me only do double stroke roles? Yeah, yeah. And um, now I just, you know, after going to Berkeley and studying with John Ramsey, and he studied out of the Alan Dawson book, 
everything was just, um, it was a lot of, of articulation exercises. Like if you look at um, Tony Williams, he was a completely articulate. When you look at a lot of drummers now, they're not articulate. And I feel like um, some of the exercises that Alan Dawson put in the book is like completely to make you an articulate drummer. Mm -hmm. And um, so... Ex expand on that a little bit for well, us. Well, um, most people, when they do um, any rudiments, they only do them on the snare. So mm -hmm. you'd be like, double, do a double stroke roll. They'd be like... If that. Usually they just go for a buzz roll. And it's no yep. time involved. Yep. So um, what... what um, John Ramsey would do with, and I feel like I'm like um, Louis Farrakhan when he constantly is like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, right? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> the Honorable John Ramsey <laughs> yeah. would say, um, do he would basically get us to do a, a bossa nova beat on the bottom. So it'd be like a. Right? So we do, do that and then add the rudiment. So it'd be a double. Let's say a double stroke roll. So that. Very simple. <laughs> and then you say, now start that double stroke roll with the left hand. So you'd be like. So no matter how fast you're going, you got to um, you got to give those notes on the snare the exact value because you're actually playing a beat now. So it's not it's no longer. Um, double stroke roll. So I would expand on that and then um, do every rudiment. So I would do um, a, a paradiddle. So I'd be like... And then um, when you start going out of the 4-4 four, four rudiments and you start getting into the, the rudiments that are in 6, that's when it starts to get kind of weird. So you go to the double paradiddle and then a double paradiddle is... Um, really tricky. So um, you start doing the double paradiddles and you obviously you do the triple paradiddles. And then um, so you go past that which starts getting and you also do right and left hand lead. So I'll do a paradiddle that's left handed. So I talking about leading left, they start getting all scared and weird. So um, I would lead both hands. Um, now, when you were practicing with both left and right hand lead, was there like a 50% right hand, 50% left hand lead just to kind of keep the, the uh, balance there? Or was it just A lot kind of times of I would start the left hand first. And the moment I figured out that I had it, I would do it right handed. Everything I usually do, um, I usually try to do it both hands if, yeah. it's like a, if it's like a rudiment type thing, you know? So even that, so I would go to the, the ones that, so we went to paradiddle, double paradiddle, pair, pair, paradiddle, right? So then you start going into the, um, the stroke rolls. Everybody loves stroke, right? So then you go to the five. So the five would be like, so if you do a five over four, it'd be like. Double stroke five, by the way. It's not, the single five is this. Double, so I'd be like, and um, like a lot of times people will forget that drumming is most of the time is just doubles and singles. Yeah. So you know, if you have a, a horrible double stroke roll, it's going to be hard to play. <laughs> and you want both of your hands to look alike. You want them to look like um, you want them to look alike. Some people like to do their hands like this which is like a timpani grip. It's called the German grip. I do match grip. I do punch you in the mouth grip. That's what I call it. I call punch it the, the overhand mouth. right. I call it the, the Manny Pacquiao, yeah. right? So <laughs> I do the, you know, when you throw a ball, you throw it overhand. When you, when you, um, what? When you, when you do most things, yeah. you, 
You drive like this. You don't drive all like this. You know, when you ride a motorcycle, you ride it like this. You don't ride it like, like this. You know what I mean? Your sure. body is like playing congas. Your, your hands are an uh, extension of your arms, mm -hmm. you know? So then when you have the sticks in your hands, now this stick is the extension of your arms. When you move this thing like this, how does that look? Yeah. It looks stupid. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, okay. it's this vibe. You want that wave to be going. If you look at any of those Jim Chaplin videos, if you look at his arms, he's always like arms out. You look at Dom Formolaro, people who got real good techniques, their arms are always constantly out, and it's a molar, overhand, Manny Pacquiao vibe. So five-stroke roll, you know, the five over the four is the easiest way to understand what a five-stroke roll is. But what I like to do is I like to make it be in five. So I'll play the five in five. So it'd be like, um. Pretty hard because um, you're playing five. One, two, three, four, 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 five. Right yeah. over the four, which is one. So that's why that is kind of difficult. So then I'll go from five and I'll be like, um, instead of alternating, which I was doing, which is a right hand lead and then a the left hand lead, right hand lead, left hand lead, vice versa. What I would do is I would do all rights. So it'd be like. Noticing that you're, you're, you you start noticing what hands are weaker. Mm -hmm. So um, then I would, uh, man, this is a long thing because you can go, you no, can do this great. all day. This is great. I've <laughs> already, I've already got a few ideas right? uh, for, for 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 myself too. Mm -hmm. um, so keep, yeah, continue. All right. So then, um, um, so you got the five. Yeah. And then the six stroke roll. All right, all right. So let's stay at the five. The five. Then you could do single stroke fives, right? So the single stroke five alternated would be this. Also do the same thing you did with a double where you concentrate on all right. So you'd be like. Left-handed. So uh, I would do that and then I would mix them up. So. Say I'm doing a double, double, a double stroke five, so I'd be like, I'll do four of those. Let's do alternations. So we'll okay. do alternate right, left, right, left, and um, I would do four of each. So I would do a right, left, right, left. Then I would do singles, right, left, right, left. So it would sound like this. Look like this because it's gonna sound the same. Yeah. Because they got the same value. So. articulation exercise Big because time, yeah. you have to play the rhythms because you're in you're playing in a beat so the moment it starts to be a seven stroke roll which is um So you, yeah. got, you got that going on. So you, you do both of them. So if you're doing fives, I keep going off track. If you're doing fives on a snare, what I would do is I would get mad at my girlfriend at little stupid stuff. <laughs> and I would be like... <laughs>
All right, so this part starts being weird because nobody practices rudiments around the drums. Yes. So when you start getting over here, this whole Manny Pacquiao thing that you're doing, yeah. when you're punching people with lefts and rights, yeah. starts to be real weird when you're over here. Mm -hmm. Because your body is, your feet are over here. So, which is a real helpful thing because this helps with articulation the most in a level of, um, it helps with balance. So when you're off balance, being able to play the same way is kind of a, a, a hard thing. Um, sometimes you'll see me hit a cymbal with my left hand, and it's kind of because I've been practicing going around the drums. I'll play paradiddles. You gotta go from here, yeah. right-handed, It's easier. So um, that's why this exercise is the bomb. So that's the five. Then when you go to the sixes, it starts to be like um, it's a five with an extra, extra um, single on the on the last hand. So it'll be like um, so instead of be like right five. So that's right handed, and it, I don't think this one alternates doesn't alternate. No, so no. it'll be like. A lot of people play this rudiment and don't even know it's a six stroke roll. So yeah. it'll be like. And then um, you could also do them single strokes. Um, so I'd be like. showed you and then we just go up the list so you go to nines and you'd be like uh oh um, yeah and then you get tired and you're not mad at anybody and then so then you know your girlfriend could rest easy that right, night, right? So then, uh, so I would I would do that, and then I would eat, also do all the I would do all the rudiments like that, and I would look at like um, look at paradiddles in a lot of different ways. So I would sit there and add roughs to paradiddles or drags, you know what I mean? So I'd be like, uh, I don't know if that's in the that might be in the rudiment book, um, but I don't know. So I'd be like. I would add drags to pretty much anything I could. So I would do um, double, double paradiddle drags. Do that, and then I would start getting really weird with it. And, uh, you know, I would add a bass drum. So instead of you doing, this is when you get really, like, bored of this. You know what I mean? Like, which is really hard because it's always going to be hard. I watched Virgil Donati do a similar exercise like this, and he was pouring sweat, and I knew that I was on to something, because he, when I was first doing it, actually, before I saw Virgil, I was mostly doing it on the snare. Okay. Let's yeah. get that straight. And yeah. then when I saw Virgil, Virgil practices, like, Virgil will be like, um... I mean, 
Eso trae. Slow that down again. You so do that it's again. just, it's just, um, it's just. him do that a lot and so I would actually um so then I started doing the, the Alan Dawson thing more around the drums but then being bored I would do an extra I would add a kick so it'd be instead of being like And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much how I started started to like just started blending all the rudiments into like a drum set practice thing instead of a, a snare practice thing. Because um, I notice a lot of drummers don't really practice. Like they practice playing beats. Yeah. But when it comes to like hands and having like any kind of technique, I don't know why people shy, shy away from like being technically. It's like today yeah. we today we had a problem where we had to have my girlfriend um send a file and she yes. was like, I don't know how to work the internet. And it was just like it's kind of the same thing technique wise yeah. where you just don't even want to. It's yeah. like please want to, because we need this, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's the same thing with this where sometimes you get in a, a situation where um where you have to. I get in a Mars Volta and um, you know, I'll play this. How do you play more ghost notes? And you're like, how? <laughs> you just play them harder. <laughs> He's like, no, more ghost notes. Okay. So that whole drag thing started being a way of life because I would add notes in the middle of riffs that had no notes possible in your mind. You know, okay, yeah. had to almost make this happen. So. We'll get something that kind of vibe to show you how to do it. Um, I would start with a paradiddle, so you got a paradiddle. And you put the right hand on the hi hat. And then you um, you follow the right hand with the kick, so. getting creative with the left hand. So I would add little notes in the middle of anything. So I'd be like. So you could also take it the Thomas Hake way, where you just play a coder note over it. <laughs> it's a good way of isolating your left hand. So. You can even start adding beats 
with the kicks. So I still have yeah. a pure little vibe going on. And then, um, you know, I would just get more creative and I'll turn it into like a, a this is where my mind goes when this, this kind just, of stuff goes on. This is brilliant. This is so I would go brilliant. and um, say, you know, I would. a lot of times people ask me to play all this weird stuff. So let's say we're playing in seven. So I would play this parody thing in seven. So I'd be like... seven and then that quarter note thing i would do i would do that but um for right now we'll we'll stick on the seven with the right hand so i'd be like right, and then you um if you practice if you practice turning that quarter note into an upbeat so instead of it being like, um, or, or, or just a regular pair, it'll be like, so when you, if you think like that, this is the the secret of the Meshuggah vibe, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, um, if your 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 lower half, which is your snare, say your snare, and your kick is in seven, since you could do this, and you could do this, um, now you've made it where you can play your right hand in four over to seven. Mm -hmm. So I would I would mess with that. So I'll do that. You're, you're basically drumming, dude. If you sit back and you look at it, it's just basically teaching your body how to do the things that's in your mind. Yeah. It's that. It's just yeah. that. So that's how I kind of did it. You know, I would sit there. When I watched Virgil, I remember watching Virgil. I was on a clinic tour with Virgil for 10 days, dude. Re like, not even maybe three years ago. Yeah. And I was freaking out because he was doing all that stuff you think about, but <laughs> you're like, that's stupid. Like, I'm never going to be able to play that. And he would... He would actually do it, so it would be times where I would watch him, and he'll be playing, um, say, uh, so he'd be like, say he was in three. He would go play um, four, four, seven, four over the top of it, so. sit there and watch him and be like, how is he doing it? That's like the, the tip of the iceberg of the craziness I saw him do. That's oh, the yeah. only thing I can do <laughs> yeah. of the stuff I was watching him do. Yeah. So um, basically, I would just sit there, dude. You got to sit on your drums. A lot of times um, as drummers or anybody, period, man, the moment stuff started getting hard, yeah. they go back to exactly what's easy. Yeah. So yeah. Um, sometimes, like, the go back to the Mars Volta story, I had a guy, that dude, he basically asked me to play Ghost notes harder. He was just like, <laughs> and, then I, and if I didn't develop this left hand thing, where it's like, like really working on it, you know what I mean? I wouldn't have been able to do it. And a yeah. lot of times, that's the thing. A lot of times, it's like, um, you know, a lot of times, it's that. Is that you know, they have people who they want to do certain things, and their mind can't can't really process that. You know what I mean? Their yeah. mind is can't process like um you know even me being a church drummer it's way different for me to play rock stuff yeah like um, church drums is like you know a lot of it is you can't play that when I don't you're know playing. What, I don't know what kind of
got church. No, I'm just saying, like, the kind of fields are triplet-based fields. You know what I mean? Like that kind of vibe, where when you're playing rock stuff and it's straight eights, you can play that, but then you start sounding like Joey Jordison. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, those kind of fills aren't like the same kind of fills that you would watch John Bonham play. Yeah. You know what I mean? He played a lot more power drum fills, which aren't as triply with the bass drum. They're not like... A lot of, a lot of the, 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 the gospel chop stuff is more of a, a triplet. Yeah. It's got its thing, but where, where I, what I've been playing and the records I'm playing on, a lot of times I can't incorporate those fills. Mm-hmm. So it's made me change the way I look at drums, the way I approach them. You know what I mean? Like for me, when I was playing, when I play like more hip hop, R&B stuff, it's funny. It's hilarious because yeah. I start playing. You know what I mean? And, I, and that's the vibe, but I try to like incorporate both of the, of the, the whole styles. Like I look at playing the drums as not a style. Like I look at it like, you know, I look at it like when I'm playing rock, I'm playing jazz. And when okay. I'm playing jazz, I'm playing rock. And when I'm playing reggae, I'm playing hip hop. Because in the level of it, it's all the same thing. Like if you look at a, um, if you look at it in the level of like rhythm, you know, you, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. If you look at, you know, I could, I could show you. So you could be like. on the level of um, um, a jazz verse rock thing, you know what I mean? Attack the notes, the way you're playing these notes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then when you start playing fills, that's when it stylistically starts to be a big thing because you start noticing that like certain feels just don't go right. Like you'll hear a person and they'll be uh, the song will be like right? that goes with that that yeah. rhythm. Yeah. Where if you play, like it goes, yeah. but it's forced, bro. Yeah. It's like it's like trying to squeeze a sixteen passenger van into a compact parking spot yeah and so a lot of times that's that's the struggle yeah that's the struggle with people who necessarily don't understand that it's all the same so <laughs> if that makes any that sense makes, that makes a ton, <laughs> it makes a ton of sense yeah. to me um and i just have a couple questions yeah. right, you know my first off chuck silverman's in the chat it says Hi. chuck yeah he says uh, more cowbell please all right i'll play cowbell for chuck yeah <laughs> do, it, do it right now play him a little cowbell, cowbell uh, this, is uh, chuck. this is for chuck uh yeah. that I had for you though uh, because I talk a lot about to to our members and to students who are learning and one of the questions they always try or problems that they have and questions that I get a lot of is a balance now you were saying you need to take your time to go through these exercises and to just get sit behind the kit what about like what would you say about the balance between doing those exercises and then playing the music and jamming along Um, Uh, I I mean it's kind of like having leg day and ab day okay I mean it's like um, I mean jamming along to music is awesome but it's also like having nobody tell you anything. 
You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's not like, like, you know, you don't have anybody tell you anything. You yeah. could be playing anything. You could be playing, you got a drummer playing also. It's kind of like watching when you watch drum covers mm -hmm. and he's like, this dude is playing all the fills, kind of, but you can actually hear the drummer behind him playing the fills, so you really don't know. Yeah. It's kind of like that. So I do, like, applaud people, and I used to do it, played a, a lot of music, um, but I would also mix it up. Mm -hmm. Like, I would... I would play, um, sometimes I would have days where I would just play by myself. And then I would have days I just play with music. And I also tried to have music that was, like, challenging. Not mm -hmm. as far as, like, um, doesn't have to be, like, the black page. But, like, when I was younger playing the music, like, I would play a lot of rap music. And it was actually tight. Like, now you listen to rap and rhythmically, rhythmically, you know, if you listen to a lot of the, the new songs that's coming out, they don't even be having a snare drum. Yeah. It just be like a bass drum and a monotone rap. So for me, it's like now to be playing the hip hop, it's a little difficult because the rhythms are, you know, people aren't as creative. Where when I was totally practicing to a lot of rap stuff, it was Timberland, um, a lot of that first, that first Neptune stuff. Buster Rhymes is always tight to practice well, yeah. too because he got the craziest beats going on. People with real beats, that's... That's the thing, you know, practicing the Wu-Tang ain't going to necessarily get it, you know, rhythmic-wise. But we playing the, like, Timberland and some of the Dre stuff and some of that stuff, it's kind of like, man, you know what I mean? Yeah. Rhythmically, it's hard. Or, you know, any Missy Elliott, that vibe when back in the days when that was popping off, that was the stuff that I would usually practice to. Timberland a lot because he would always do those... slow and a lot of times trying to solo over stuff that's slow is really hard like that last song I was playing like it's fast you know so um yeah. that sometimes starts to be a a, a thing too because you start learning how to solo over certain tempos which is good for playing over stuff. But um, the rudiment thing for me is it, I did it more because um, I wanted to be more articulate than people. Like when mm -hmm. I see a lot of drummers, um, when I see a lot of drummers, it just reminds me of like watching a dude like try something really hard or like a skateboarder. They try something really hard yeah. and it just looks ugly. Yeah. And that's how it is for me. I Where when you look at some skaters, they can just ollie down the stairs and it looks way cooler than anything that other person did just because it was stylish. Like yep. they landed it super fresh. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel about um, drumming and just like the whole articulation thing. Like when I watch Tony Williams play the drums, like when I watch those videos on YouTube, he's just like a lot of levels above all those other dudes. You know what I mean? Like on a level of like anybody who could do a double stroke roll or a single like and be like... Everybody just off that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. that's how I look at it. When I look at Jim Chaplin, you look at those Jim Chaplin videos, and he's like, oh. And he's like, and then when you want to go fast, <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He's whooping everybody's ass. So you look at it like that, and that's why I took the time. You know what I mean? You look at Buddy Rich, it's the same thing. Yeah. Like Buddy Rich was just, he had better hands than everybody. Yeah. So regardless of anything else, like when you hear him, when you hear him play a note on the drums, it was. Amazing when you hear Herbie Hancock and he says, blah, blah. <laughs> just one chord, two chords, man. It's like, that was amazing. It's you all know? about how he plays. Yeah, it. it's about the sound. Yeah. It's about the sound. And a lot of times as drummers, we forget that. Like, you know, we've had 10 years of fools putting the cymbals in the air and the drums low. Yeah. And like 10 years of drum companies coming out with horrible sounding drums mm -hmm. that people just like because they're trendy. Yeah. And people not even caring about sound. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where you look at the jazz drummers, you look at, I remember having Greg Hutchison and Ndugu Chancellor say, sit there and just play the rock. You know what I mean? Where is that? Where are the dudes doing that? You know what I mean? So now it's kind of hard because like a lot of kids missed the whole school. They missed the school yes. of, um, 
of the OGs being like, bro, feather the bass drum, you know what I mean? Work on that. Like, you know, so a lot of the a lot of the guys that a lot of people like, that people look at, they're the last generations of the guys who saw the real dudes. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why you don't see many young guys. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the last generation of the guys who got to see Buddy Riches and the Tony Williams and then the Chris Daves and the 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 Dennis Chambers and the Billy Cobhams. Yeah. Like now the way we the way we learn has been changed. Mm -hmm. Like the way we learn everything, the way we learn how to cook yeah. is now on YouTube. You're learning how to make Cheshron well, chicken on YouTube. You know what I mean? Full chat and hundreds of people watching this <laughs> yeah. right now. And, so and it's so, just yeah, the, it's the way you learn. So now yeah. I feel like as you know, since we know that, you kind of gotta go back and be like, all right, let me go look at what made this awesome. Mm -hmm. Let me go look at like the other. I was telling you, I was went and listened to Giant Steps, like the original version of Giant Steps, and it was just. Um A number of bars, man. And if you listen to it, it's totally like he turned it into like some Latin. Yeah. Like if you if you really are digging into it and not just hearing this dude solo, yeah. like just mute his solo and yeah. just listen to the drums, he turns it into some Latin thing. Mm -hmm. And you vaguely wouldn't even remember it. Mm -hmm. But it's like a funky Latin thing. It's not like a like so much of a like an authentic thing, but it's like a funky thing, you know? And that's the stuff that people overlook. You know, yeah. they overlook the little things and they go straight to the blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, which is cool, but everybody's doing that, so. I love I love that approach. I really do. Can we um, get you to play something for us? A song? Yeah. yeah. We have one that actually is great because this is a, a Drumio Edge play along. We and have. I don't know it. And he doesn't know it. So I, but he was really excited to play it, so uh, we'll get it. We'll get him to play that. Get your questions in. I'll play seen that there's a ton of questions already right. so we'll get to those after that um but uh, yeah let's play something i might mess this up so don't judge me nobody will know oh man let's not mess this up <laughs> all right come on
Okay, so we got a ton of questions. I'll let you catch your breath. I just want to also, before we get into questions, just thank your sponsors, Zach, for, for, for helping with DW. Yeah. No Gin, <laughs> Promark, Evans Heads. Yeah. So they've been good to you? No, I hate those people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. You told me you loved them. And Gong Bops and oh, um, yes, sorry. yeah, and uh, and Viv, Vivica, and everybody in the memorials. Man, Viv just sent me the track, so that was huge. Yeah, thank you, Viv. Um, yeah. And that was the very first song you played. What was that from? Is that the memorials that was from? Track no, that was from a Zenith Petrero record that I did a long time ago. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have very many tracks. It's really hard for me to go and ask artists be like, yo. <laughs> Yeah. Christian Scott, can you give me those songs yeah. from this? And it's always hard to play this stuff. Or, you know, a lot of cats just play to, like, Beyonce. And it's like, I want to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about Beyonce? All right, let's do this. <laughs> All right, let's get to some questions here. This one's from Tenkata. He says, uh, thanks so much for this lesson, Thomas. It puts, the, it puts steak on the plate of rudiments for me, he says. So he says, two questions I have for you. Why the shoeless kick drum? And second, any suggestions, or are you suggesting to take your rudiment practice to another level and improving your limb independence by practicing rudiments along with another beat? Oh, man. Um, that last question, we'll get back to that. The whole thing about the whole shoe thing is um, I like wearing these Nikes that you see, and they're not smooth on the bottom. So yeah. a lot of times... Um, it's not necessarily me sliding myself on the pedal. But my foot slides on the pedal. Yep. So um, to save socks, I just took my shoe off. And the other thing is, when you keep your shoe on, you do it. Like, um, I don't know. I just feel like playing naked is better. Sure. Like, you know, I would go at home and play butt naked on my seat and go to <laughs> take my seat out and tell people to sit on it and touch it. That's um, what you did with us here. <laughs> no, I told you. We can't but do yeah, it's just, it's just, man, I just feel a lot more freedom not having a shoe on. All my homies are like get some karate shoes, and I'm like, that's stupid. Like, I don't want to, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to go play some karate, some Dave Wuckel tennis shoes. Um, <laughs> I would rather just take my shoe off. And everybody, man, like a lot of the stuff I do is just really old school church tricks, man. Like a lot of people in church don't really necessarily have a lot of money to buy drum heads, so I would use. Itty head. <laughs> so it just turned out to be, oh, it's a clear head, you know? And I love the clear head. But this is, happened before people started freaking out on me playing clear heads. Yeah. I would just do it because it was cool. Like, you get a snare, and a lot of people um, growing up in church would take their snare and their pedal. That was, like, the thing. You go to church, you got your snare, your pedal. Yeah. So, you know, you get a new snare, and you put some head nobody's seen on it. And next thing you know, people are like, what snare is that? And it's kind of like the same thing. But um, I don't know, like a lot of the drum tradition things is about um, a tradition, like coated head on the snare. Like half the guys out here buying drum sets aren't playing brushes. Yeah, I would so, say more than half. Right, more than half. Yeah. And, you know, what makes you think that you need to have a 13 or 14 inch hi-hat? Who says the ride is supposed to be 20 inches? Who said the first time should, you know what I mean? It's yeah. all tradition. And if you look at the whole history of drums, it was all these marching drums put together to make a set. And then we just stuck with it and we kept going with it. And, you know, for me, I like to try new things. A lot of the drum stuff that I try is mostly um, heads, cymbals, the tom configurations. I've kind of tried a lot of different things where I hated it. And so I know what I like, you know. So that stuff I don't really change. But the heads and, you know, the shoe off and that type of stuff, that's just kind of like just a necessity of me at this sure. moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll get to, to the second part of that question later, you said? What was it? It was, are you suggesting to take the rudiment practice to another level and improve your limb independence by practicing rudiments along to another beat? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying take rudiments and practicing to another level in a whole, as a whole, as a whole person, as a, as a person. You know what I mean? Take it yep. to another level, man. Like, we should see, it's, some, it's a lot of topics that I feel like, as a drummer, don't get covered. Like, people don't talk about drum tuning, People don't talk about practicing. People don't, like, they do, but they really don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's kind of the situation. It's because a lot of times these are unknowns. These are not things we understand. You know, how are we supposed to practice? It's like, who, who's supposed to tell you how to practice, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Sean underscore drummer asks, what was the first kit that you ever played on? What was your first drum set? My first drum set that I owned was not the same when I played. I think the first drum set I ever played was at my first church, and it was like a Tama... 
wine red garbage drum set. You know what I mean? And then the first drum set I had, I was like five. And I got a Remo Junior Pro, which is like the, it was an old school Remo kids kit. And you could change the heads. And that was like the first, well, before that, I got a Toys R Us kit and I broke that. So that yeah. doesn't count. Yeah. This kit, you could actually tune it back up. Oh, okay. And um, it was it was cool. And I, I stuck with that for a long time. And then my real first kit was a Pro Export. And then I had a I had a mirror finish one. Oh. And then it was the regular church Pro Export everybody has. Yeah. And then um, it burnt up in a fire. Then I got a new one. Oh. And then I, I saw a Master Series art, um, ad. And I told my grandmother I wanted it. And she was called Guitar Center, and they said it was like three Gs. Oh, yeah. And then she was like, you ain't getting that. And then the drum off happened. Yeah. Guitar Center drum off. And I told her I was going to win it because yeah. that was the, the prize. Yeah. And I won it. That's awesome. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was a determined little kid, No man. kidding. How old were you with that when you uh, I won the drum off when I was like nine. Unbelievable. Yeah, I was determined, dude. Like, that's just pretty much how I've always been. Like, I mean... Next question. Don't think sure. about it. Sure, yeah. Next question. Gosh777 says, hey, great lesson. Glad to have you on Drumeo. He says, what do you practice to improve your speed? Because your speed's incredible, yeah. by the way. Yeah. I really don't practice speed, and that's a problem. And, like, I used to. I used to practice speed, but a lot of times, like, for me personally, a speed is a, is a, all right, it's some speed tricks. The speed trick is that if you notice that all the fast drummers, they play little sticks. Mm -hmm. You don't never hear about no fast drummer playing like two Bs or something. five Bs at all. Yeah. Five yeah. Bs. Find one other than Billy Cobham, yeah. right? Billy Cobham is a muscle bound five B drummer, right? Yeah. But half of them do not play big sticks. Yeah. The other thing they don't play is big cymbals. Mm. You know what I mean? So a lot of the speed stuff is, uh, um, you know, it accounts... So for me, I personally don't feel fast. When I see a lot of my friends, they're fast. You know what I mean? I'm like, that's fast. You know, for me, I feel like a different type of drummer. I used to try to be super fast. But for me, mostly, it's a, a finger thing. So I would do... I would hold my stick like this, if you can see it, you guys. Yeah. Like this, where it's this kind of vibe. And this is the vibe you want anyway. You want these two fingers to be pretty much... The, the grippers of this stick. And these back hands, these are just support, right? So what I would do is turn my hand into this timpani thing that I was talking about. And I would start and do, I would do four, eight beats on each finger. So I'd be like, like this. You know you did this right when you can hold your wrist. So you did. Right? Because you don't want your wrist to be doing this. You want your fingers to be doing this. You're supposed to be like an annoying kid in high school with a pencil. It's this vibe, right? So I would use that and I would do it on both hands. So I got fast. trick that I do is that I'll do both techniques so it'd be some stuff that I'll start like I'll start a roll like this this weird German timpani grip and then I would turn it over into a match thing so it'd be like right yeah so I'd be like yeah. and that's a lot of it a lot of it is like figuring out how to use each each technique so I'll, again it was this I don't know if you've seen that that clear, but it's pretty much. Like, you know. So I would use both of those techniques. So um, a lot of the stuff is just that. And then um, a lot of displacements with the foot. So um, like I would do. stuff is a foot in the middle of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm playing fast, but I'm all putting feet in the most random places, dude. Okay. And um, most of it is also because when you grow up in church and everybody can play. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the first thing. Everybody, you'll always hear about some new kid. You're the new kid? Watch this. He gonna come with his choir and kill it, right? So everybody has the same vocabulary, bro. It's like that 
that um, the you know the the apes they can be on an island and an island away the same monkeys will know the same thing the other monkeys on this island knows it's kind of the same similar thing mm -hmm. so the only way to actually in a lot of levels is be original is the stuff that people are playing you either avoid playing it. <laughs> Or you switch that stuff up and make it weird. Yeah. So a lot of times I would either avoid playing stuff or I would make it weird. So um, I would just always figure out ways to play things that people were playing left-handed or different ways or on a different drum or coming from a different angle or, you know, that was pretty much how I got down. And then when you see people playing the familiar lick, you could play that and then you go play your thing and you're like, damn, that fool just whooped my ass. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it's like you're... You're not only playing that, but you're playing that. You're playing the hell out of that, yeah. you know? Yeah. And a lot of people, that's that's pretty much what you want to do. You want to hear something and play it and learn it verbatim. Like, a lot of fools, I watch them play stuff verbatim. I'm like, that's cool, but how would you play it? And they have no voice. You know what I mean? You got to figure out a way to have your own voice yes. and understand that this is a vocabulary, bro. It's a vocabulary. You'll hear, you'll hear, you'll hear Tony Williams do, um, Tony Williams do... <laughs> see Gordon Campbell in LA doing this for him that's his way of changing this Tony thing you see yeah or Dennis Dennis will see the Tony thing and he'll be like start moving it around the drums you know what I mean yeah. and that's you know that's that's a little example but that's the examples of how to like you know to improvise on the stuff you're learning on yes. the, to expand on it and make it crazier as you hear something, you see somebody do a crossover, oh, he did it with his right over his left, now do it the left over the right, you know? Drumming, man. Cool. All right, next question. Yeah, next question, this one's from Frick Zero, says when you're playing, or when you're beginning to study a rudiment, when you know it's time to say, when do you know it's time to say, like, increase the BPM a little bit? He also says, by the way, mad skills, you are insane. Thank you, man. Um, I think when you, like, figure out that you can play it, like me, I'll go, I used to do, you know, pair those. and you're not struggling, speed it up. And then you got it there, speed up. Until you can't play it anymore. Like, that's yeah. an easy question, bro. You do it until you can't. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's like, how do you know how to, when you used to drive faster? Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> it's like, when you're feeling like you're slow. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Do it. So I also like what you were talking about, but articulation too. You want to make sure it's clean and crisp and all that. And yeah, you. The, the articulation thing is um is an important thing because the it's really important because at the end of the day, like you you're you want to make sense. You know what I mean? Like you want to you want to be a sensible, you know, sounding person, dude. When I that's the main thing I notice when I hear drummers. I like I could I could totally listen on a record and be like, oh, he just played that. I could watch you and and without hearing music and see exactly what you just played. Like, I got a different kind of thing, man. When I was young, I would sit next to all these drummers, man. I would sit next to all the dudes in church. I would sit next to Dennis Chambers and Sonny Emery, and they would all let me, they were all nice to me because they saw that I was very into the drums. So I would watch them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I was completely watching these guys. So for me, it was like, I see you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. I'm using every sense. I'm using yeah. my ears, my eyes. If I could smell them play it, I would be smelling them. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's, I think a lot, of, a lot of, I have a student right now, and he's like, dude, I can only get your stuff if I write it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, yo, expand on your listening senses because the writing it out is totally important, and it totally helps. Yeah. But like to have, to use all your senses is the, is the biggest thing. Your ears, your eyes. Your, your feel, like you can feel music, bro. You can feel music a lot more times than you can hear it. Like I hear people, I hear songs on the top 40. I'm like, do you hear that right there? This girl is married. Did you hear what she just said? Like if you were married, would you sing that? Yeah. Like just like you can feel stuff, you know what I mean? So it's, it's the same thing because it's the energy. So when you watch people and you see it, you can see. Don't, don't be like oblivious. If you see some dude go with his left hand to the floor, Tom, and he starts right here. You see it. It's in front of you. There's so many videos on YouTube. You can just watch it. I wish, dude, when I was at Berkeley School of Music, that's what I did. Yeah. Berkeley was YouTube for me. Because yeah. I would go there and I would go, this is when the, 
the Apple, the Apple Burnus disc in the computer first came out, bro. Yeah, yeah. I would hide that under the table at the library and be today is Brian Blade Day. Yeah. And I would go listen to every Brian Blade, put them in my CD player, yeah. and have every Brian Blade CD. Right now, you can go on YouTube and get tired of watching drummers. Yeah. So if you can look at them, if you got a modern drummer that has every drummer's name, you can almost go on YouTube and write drummer after drummer mm -hmm. and watch them live, 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 and you can see what they're playing. Mm -hmm. You can see it. It's not no secret. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Benjamin says, um, um, uh, this is very inspiring. He says, he says, I remember when uh, Thomas showing how he started developing his crazy foot technique on a modern drummer festival a few years back. I'm sure the community would love to know how, uh, how he did it. Helped me a lot at least. Thank you so much. Um, I have a couple other questions about um, from members that I've seen about your crazy foot speed. Yeah. So uh, maybe if you just give me one of your exercises that you did or maybe how you develop your, your crazy speed with your single pedal. I think the first thing that everybody, I mean, go, all right, when you go home, if you're not home already, watch the Dennis Chambers videos. The secret, the, the serious moves and in the pocket. Serious moves, he does this one thing where he's just like, um, So you start with the hi-hat and it's like And then you can make it double time Then um, that's the, that's the um, one side of the beat Then the other side of the beat is used to do this. Right? That's like a Chris Dave thing. So what I would do is I would turn that upbeat of it and the, the downbeat of the double, I would make them be one, one kind of exercise. So it'd be like... When it's on the, um, the upbeat, so I'd be like. Two, three, four. So the last one, I only do the double once because if I do it twice, it turns into this. One. Right? That's kind of hard. Yeah, so I, yeah. I mean, I could do that, but I'd rather not do that. So yeah. I would only make on the four uh, one of the, the doubles going to kick. So that one exercise, when you start doing the upbeat, downbeat it's a different muscle in your leg which is weird as hell because i haven't figured out why yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you um when you play the downbeat it's different from i don't know why can't figure it out so then you do triplets on the kick so you got sit there and just and then um you know the 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 this tom the tom kick thing is another one like i would do that a lot so i'd be like Like, 
like I sit super low. Yeah. So crazy. um sometimes when you're sitting all high, you're all tap dancing on the pedals. Yeah. And you can't get like like I could get like multiple I could put no padding in a kick. So if you were here, like I could do right? Which is like which is like uh, it's like a conga note on the on the middle of the drum, right? Yeah. A yeah. Boom, right? right? And then I'll do this, right? Which is a note. So if I'm playing Quest Love, that's what he's doing, dude. Yeah. You see Quest Love back there? Kind of like a James Brown thing. A lot of times those old school funk dudes, they are they are feathering the bass drum. secret, bro. He is feathering the bass drum. So I would use all these techniques, and a lot of times the only way I could do that is if I was that low to the kick where I can play multiple notes. Like, I'll play, I'll play down here, I'll play up here. I just, I just mess with it, dude. I'm saying, this is like a, this is like anything else, man. The longer you, you, yeah, it's, I agree. You mess with it, the crazier it gets, and yeah. you start getting bored, and you start figuring out new stuff. <laughs> like, I got to a point where I started doing all the stuff left with it, where I'm like... I was like, I'm playing double bass. I got to at least practice the same thing I'm practicing right foot yeah. and my left foot. Yeah. So, I just, I'm bored a lot, bro. I, I never had a day job. <laughs> Another question. There's tons of questions. We actually got to wrap it up, man. We're like already an hour and a half in, and I still want you to play that last play along too. Oh, all right. Um, all right, so, all right. yeah, and then we have tons of extra questions, but... Um, all right, let's answer two. Okay, two more. Right, two more, cool. okay? Uh, let's see. Let me just... I'll just randomly choose one here. DePron says, great lesson, Thomas. For a beginner, would you suggest getting the foot technique down and then add the rudiments over it? And he was talking about the boss uh, 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 ostinato you're doing over yeah. top. Or uh, the rudiment first and then add the foot technique thing in later. I would do, oh, so if you're a beginner, and you must have tried to do this and you have noticed how hard it is. All right. So as a beginner, um, you got this, um, um, a one. So it'd be like, and. Instead of the uh, you could just do one. And then the other thing that makes it easier is if you add accents to certain notes. Like I add accents on the top of the paradiddle. So if I'm doing a double paradiddle, it's like each right of the top of that paradiddle gets an accent or each left. So it'd be like... I can differentiate where they are, where yeah. they're starting. Yeah. So that's another thing that I, I forgot to mention is that a lot of drummers don't know how to hit an accent, which is like, if you look at the stick without it me touching it, that's where my stick hits. It hits flat. Right? So, see that? Don't mow that. And that's the vibe. So you want to hit the... That's why if you look at my sticks, um, they, they have this, this yeah. thing, because I'm hitting the rim... And see, stick just fly up, right? So that's my vibe. It's like a tim a timbali vibe. So it'd be like, but timbali would be more of this this edge thing. I just did that pause, homie. So it's like, but right? the middle of the drum. Right? And you want to hit all the middle of the drums.
All right, next one. Sorry. Okay, that felt so good. Just always a singles round there, but it felt okay. so good. Okay, next next question. Last one of the day. This one goes to uh, Nick Lowe. says, hey, Thomas, thank you so much for the amazing lesson. This is amazing stuff. Do you have any special physical workouts for drumming, uh, but not on the drum set? Did you ever, like, hurt yourself seriously? And if you do, how did you deal with it? Um... I did. I never really hurt myself seriously where I couldn't play. Like, I had sprained ankles from skating, sure, yeah. stuff like that. I never... The moment I started noticing I can be really hurt, I stopped doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, but, no, what I do usually is I just, I just like, stretch a lot. Like, I'll just sit there and stretch and make sure I can move my body. Like, I'll go and turn around and look backwards. <laughs> like, just regular, just stretching your body stuff. You got a girlfriend that does yoga... Do some of the ones that look like they won't break you in half. Yeah. Like, just the regular ones. Be like, show me the arms, show me the legs, show me back stuff. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. Um, I was never really seriously hurt. That's um, a big fear. <laughs> I do not want to be hurt. But um, I don't know, man. I, I feel like anything else, man. It's like you just got to sit there and work on it. Like, even if you get hurt, you got to work on mobility and making sure your body is doing the things you want it mm -hmm. to do. But... You got to sit there and do it, man. A lot of times, um, you know, if I wanted to do certain things and I wasn't necessarily used to it, I would just switch my whole lifestyle up. I would go, and if I wanted to work on my left hand playing, you know, I would just start doing everything left-handed. So I already eat left-handed, but I would start eating right-handed. Or I would, you know, instead of throwing the ball right-handed, throw the ball left-handed. You yeah. know what I mean? Just like regular stuff. Like yeah. if you are used to like... Smoking a cigarette with your right hand, smoke with your left hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just little stuff like that to trick your mind into not knowing that it's different. Yeah. Because that's the only thing that makes your right hand or left hand better is that you use it more. Exactly. So a lot of that type of stuff is what I would think Try about. Try not to overcomplicate it. Yeah, yeah, not make it real difficult. Just make it, you know, just continue to go with what you're going with and try to keep your limbs moving. You know what I mean? Yeah. So kids, smoke with your left hand. Yeah, smoke not with your left hand. Drink with your right. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> we All right, we got to wrap it up. Cool. Okay, so I'm playing that last point. I don't know what song I'm playing to. You, you, do you want to just, you can solo if you want. You did play no, the song once before. I got to get you to play it. What song, song is it though? The first one you jammed to. All right, let's try it. You I don't remember it. it. Yeah, I don't remember it, but let's try it. You're going to kill it. Thanks everyone for coming out. I um, just wanted to say th thanks again for the sponsors for bringing uh, uh, Thomas or helping Thomas uh, come out here. Tom, hey, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jared. Yes. Thank you, man.